rough seas, magical landscapes, stone bells and fresh fish. This is Drone and Phone. It's 5.30 in the morning and we're about to take this boat. Where are we going to go, Don? Right, we're off to Itbayat Island. It's a three-hour boat ride from here in Vasco. Okay, another great adventure. Let's get going. <laughs> in this series, Drone and Phone is exploring the islands of Batanas, the most northerly point in the Philippines and just 840 kilometers west of Hong Kong. I'm with Don Mahano from Inquirer.net, who's accompanying me on the adventure. Good it's, workout for the morning. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> The three-hour boat ride to Itbayat is not for the faint-hearted. It gets a little bouncy at times as flying fish skit around the waves. At least on this boat there's a little more space to spread out. If you're lucky, the boatmen will reel in some fresh fish and cut it up for passengers to enjoy a sashimi breakfast. Getting off the boat and onto the island itself is a precarious affair as Itbayat has no beaches. If you make it onto dry land, there is plenty to explore. Our guide Jason was waiting for us at the port with his tricycle and wasted no time in starting the tour. This is unbelievable. Nothing quite like this I've seen in my entire life. Never in the Philippines? Uh, well, we've got like white sand beaches all over the Philippines, but nothing like as blue as this. Itbayat has no real mountains drive to the highest point and get a view over the whole island. It's more of a large plateau with steep impenetrable cliffs on every side. It does have truly stunning rocky landscapes with deep blue seas lapping up against them. We started out taking a walk through the Torogun cave. What do you make of this cave, Don? Wow. Yeah, I was saying it's pretty impressive. I was expecting some bats, but I no, don't know. No bats? Can't, yeah. be, can't be a cave without bats, right? Yeah, that's right. Apparently bats don't like windy places with light, which this cave has plenty of. It's believed to be a landing place of the first settlers from Taiwan and remained their dwelling place. Back on the bike, the three of us went on a quick island tour, stopping to shoot the odd picture and chat with the locals. In this village, we found a farmer making the local wine by grinding bamboo. At sunset, we headed for a westerly facing cliff. This little thing is performing really well in Itbia. It's nearly the end of the first day. We've got a little surprise coming tomorrow, but so far, it's been a really interesting day. Eh? Yeah. Some absolutely beautiful scenery here and some interesting culture. What was the highlight for you, Don? Oh yeah, the three-hour boat ride is really something for me with the, the big waves and like, it's it was rough. quite a journey to get here, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Right, one more thing still to come tomorrow morning, bright and early. So, good morning. Yeah. It's 3.45 in the morning, how are you feeling? Uh. We started early on the first day in Batanas and every subsequent day seemed to get earlier and earlier. We're going to try and catch dawn in some remote place. It's about an hour's hike uh, and a short uh, motorcycle ride. <laughs> Dawn's in the, on the back, let's get going. The one hour walk before dawn is made much easier by the moon and the stars that light up the cliff walk and build anticipation of what will be revealed at first light. It by it never fails to meet expectations, this time a dazzling feast of colours as the sun rose and brought the jagged cliffs into profile. We spent more than three hours hiking around the cliffs and playing on the natural rock bells. I've got to say this is a really spectacular cliff walk across the top here. We didn't see it when we came at night time, uh, but on the way back, well, See the views, it's just amazing. Now, if you've enjoyed this show, please like our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash drone and phone. You can also find our previous episodes nicely catalogued on drone and and on our YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on inquirer.net, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's at inquirer.net. My name is DJ Clark, and this is Drone and Phone.
So I just met Ferdy, who has a very interesting story to tell. Ferdy's from Manila, but your great grandfather was Turkish. Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. And tell us about him. Well, probably he's a traveler. And uh, there was a ship shipwrecked uh, that was caused by a, the great tsunami. They call it great tsunami. And he ended up here in this island of Itbayat. And he stayed here for several years. And uh, I think the government at that time uh, gave a resettlement area somewhere in Leyte and Surigao. So they, they migrated there, there the, the whole family. But this gives you ancestral rights because he is registered or his fam some of his family yeah, still remain the here. The tribe, the ancestors are from here. And uh, I only found out uh, last year when my brother told me about it. And how, how is it to be here for the first time? What are your first well, impression? My first impression here, the people are so nice, very kind, down to earth, laid back, and a lot more. So you have to visit here, uh, here in Itbayat. 